Next up, let's talk about a pretty simple example, a simple trading strategy that a lot of people use. That's pretty easy to follow. Um, there's a lot of details here, but you can simplify this significantly. Uh, so it's just using exponential moving averages on the five minute chart. So for this particular strategy, these, this is the criteria that I like to use for bullish and bearish setups. So for bullish criteria, uh, again, this is for any strategy. You have to make sure that the market structure is making higher lows and higher highs. Otherwise, you should not be taking this trade long, even if you get the signal to do that. Uh, number two is just as important. You want to see price break above a resistance and then hopefully enter on the retest, which should align with the moving average. Number three, you want to see all the short-term moving averages stacked on top of each other, which is the nine above the 13, above the 20. But as I talk about simplifying this, you, could, you probably only need to use the nine and the 20 EMA for this particular strategy. And I like to see the steepness of the EMAs between 35 degrees to 50 degrees. And you can measure this with your trend line tool pretty much any platform I use Nick for swim. And then not a requirement, but definitely like to see uh, if this is, if the short term EMAs are above the 50 EMA, it just indicates that the trend is really strong, but you can get reversals off of support and a, a bearish trend where we ship bullish where the 50 EMA is not below the short term EMAs. And inversely, the bearish criteria is market structure is making lower lows and lower highs, price growth below support, and all the short-term MMAs are stacked um, in a bearish style where the 9 is below the 13 and 13 is below the 20. And I like to see the steepness a little bit more. It's a little bit more steep for bearish setups because fear is about three times more powerful than greed. Uh, as we like to say in the stock market, it likes to take the escalator up and the elevator down. And you'll see over time that several weeks and months of gains can be wiped out in a couple of days. Uh, so the steepness of the EMA is like to see between negative 35 degrees and negative 55 degrees. And the last one, short term EMAs are below the 50 EMA. But like I said, it's not an absolute criteria to have that but definitely the first three are the most important. First up, let's take a look at a bullish example using these EMAs. So this is before the US market cash opened at 6.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 9.30 a.m. for you guys on the East Coast. So we can see the pre-market data in the, the Globex session. The price is more or less sideways, It's but it's slowly making higher lows pre-market. So first I'm going to draw my support and resistance lines. Again, this could be zones, excuse me, zones as opposed to just regular horizontal lines, but it, you'll find out what works best for you by experimenting and putting in some, some screen time, getting, just becoming comfortable with the tools that you're using. So first we got the zones here. We got our, we got our resistances. We're looking for a long trade. We want to see price break above those resistances. So here are the here's the checklist for this strategy. Let's run through it. Is market structure making higher lows and higher highs? Yes, we see the higher lows there. And price starts to make higher highs as it breaks through resistance. Before that market actually opens. So price broke above resistance. Yes, it did one, two, and three times before the market actually opened. Actually, the, the third time it broke above resistance was that was actually the first five minute candle of the market open. So next up, number three is the nine EMA above the 13 and 13 above the 20. Yes, clearly can see that. And not an absolute necessity to measure this, but over, because over time you're just going to recognize if you use the EMA strategy, you'll recognize that this moving average, these moving averages look like the correct steepness. They look like it's trending nicely and you don't actually have to measure it. Um, more or less, if you look for a, about a 45 degree angle, nothing too steep, nothing too flat. And the trade, this strategy typically works really well. And we can see that that steepness 
because I measured it, it was around 40 degrees. And all the short term EMAs are above 50 EMA. So let's talk about like where we would actually enter this trade. So here's the first break above that we we broke above the resistance. So we'd be looking for an entry back to retest old resistance new support. So that's what that green shaded rectangle is. So if you trade pre-market, I don't recommend it, but you can. Um, it's just a little bit risky with the volatility and the whippiness that can happen on the first on the opening drive, I like to say, in the first five to ten minutes. But if you do trade the pre-market, where we would have actually entered this would have been around previous market structure. We'd probably have to enter a little bit higher off the EMAs. So you have the 9, 13, and the 20. I typically like to enter between them. If you can get an entry closer to the 20 EMA, the better. So you won't have as much risk. And we more or less want to put our stop below the previous market structure. So we don't, so at least we give some time for the, some room for the trade to work. Just in case that previous market structure, old resistance new support does not hold. And the first target on this one would be to that top resistance that we had. So it's about two, three hour trade. And then as the market opens, we I think the first 15 minutes, that's the after 15 minutes, we see a doji reversal candle. And at that point, we would look to take profit if you're still in the trade, trailing any runners. So let's just say that you didn't enter that trade pre-market because you're a good disciplined trader and you're waiting for the market to open. We see that price breaks above that resistance of the overnight action. And now it becomes support. So just like the first example, old resistance is now a new support. We want to look to buy between the nine and the 20 EMA and put our stop below that previous market structure because we don't want to see price fail that area. So after we enter, our first target is going to be back to where that doji reversal candle had. I don't like to put it at the wick. I like to put it a little bit lower just in case it doesn't quite get up there and then you miss getting filled and then price could potentially come back and you could have less profit. So if you're still in this trade, price breaks above that resistance and now holds and we continue higher. So at this point, if you're trailing, I would look to just trail below each, trail your stop below each new low on the five minute chart until you see, until you actually hit a resistance or you see a reversal sign, which in this case, we see a bullish piercing pattern uh, just after we made a new high, the next candle was a red bullish, or excuse me, bearish piercing pattern. Tried to push up, then we sold off almost the whole candle before that, and then just continued lower. So at that point, we would look to just take the profit, and more than likely, you are done for the day, and you don't need to trade anymore. Last thing I want to say about this moving average strategy, or at least for this bullish example, um, and you'll see the same thing in the bearish example, is that not only do you want to see all of this, these criteria being met when you look to set find a trade that for using the EMAs, if you can look for the EMAs to cross over one another. So say, for example, I have the 9 and 20 EMA on my 5-minute chart. I would look for the 9 to cross above the 20 um, and look like it's starting a nice uptrend to confirm uh, a trend like this or a trade like this, especially if we're breaking above resistance. So that's another thing to look over, look for the crossover in conjunction with uh, these other criteria. So let's take a look at a bearish example. So it's clear that price is in a bearish market structure. So we're going to be looking to go short here. So price sold off. I believe that's in the globe X session just after the, the Asian market opens. So price sold off, but slowly was making higher lows to test old support, new resistance, which you can see if I were to draw this trend line or this channel, more or less have something like this. It's just a giant bear flag, more or less, because after we broke below, more than likely there's a support to the left that I'm not showing here, but that's on strong volume that we broke down. So definitely not a bullish sign. So again, start with your zones and your 
or your price levels, draw them on your chart so you have an idea of where the critical levels are. So here are the five criteria. Also pay attention to the crossover where the nine could cross below the 20 EMA to indicate uh, the beginning of a trend or a move lower. So market structure is making lower lows and lower highs. You can see that we keep making lower highs and each time we make a lower high, we're making a new lower low as well. Did price break below support? Uh, yes, it did. If you look over, all the way over here, we had this high wave doji candle, which is a pretty bullish candle. This one right here. There's a lot of volume there. So if we break that, it's more or less more than likely there's going to be a lot of sell stops. A lot of people that went long going to get stopped out, which is going to drive the price lower. So is the nine below the 13 and is 13 below the 20? Yes. And then number four, steepness of the EMAs. Again, you'll eventually be able to just see this with your eyes and pick up on, on the pattern and the signals by putting in screen time. You wanna see it between the steepness of these moving averages between negative 35 degrees, negative 55 degrees. And it's about negative 35 degrees, the downside. So that's good. And number five, not a requirement, but obviously a good thing to see. Short-term EMAs are below the 50 EMA, and they are. We have a clear zone here that acted as support, but after it broke, it now has become resistance. So you definitely don't want to buy here. You definitely want to sell after support breaks and we're continuing to make lower lows and lower highs. The first trade is actually going to be once we break below the support here, we're going to look for a retest back up to the 13 and 20 EMA, we want to put our stop. We want to look to get short in this red box more or less because we broke through here. We want to short the red box where the EMAs are also coinciding with the price. So we've put our stop, or excuse me, our entry around the 13, between around the 13 EMA, maybe the 20, 20, like I said, is preferred entry on a trending move. And we want to put our stop below the last big bearish candles high, which in this case would be this candle right here. So we put our stop there. We have our entry. So this is the ES S&P 500 futures. It's about, I don't know, four or five points stop. And of course, if you can't trade the minis with that size of a risk, size of a stop, then you could trade the micros. So no biggie. And then once we're in that trade, as it works, we'll trail our stop down as the price just hugs the EMAs. And we'll look for a bottoming pattern because on this chart, I don't have any support levels drawn, but I'm sure if I look to the left, there probably was a support level and a reason why we bounced three times in this area. So the first time you see the bounce here, and then you see this doji candle here, you'd want to take your profit on that trade is more than likely you're gonna have a buy stop run up to the upside to test resistance again. Which is exactly what happened. So, and you can keep seeing like there's plenty of short opportunities here. The trend is still down. We're still making lower highs, lower lows. So price comes back up again, just after the cash market. So that first trade I just showed you was the Globex. So if you happen to be up in the middle of the night or if you're on the other side of the world, I'm in San Diego, you probably would be up trading this and catching this move. But if you are like me and you don't, you're, you're gonna be sleeping around that time, you're gonna be looking to trade the next trade that I'm gonna show you, which is um, the US market open, or at least around the reversal time frame, which is 30 minutes after the US market opens. We look for that same resistance zone to be tested to look to enter another short position, which we can see to the right. Um, so after we see the price reject there, we don't actually we don't actually want to enter in that zone because it's not the exact strategy I'm showing you right now. But that's why I like market structure the best. Just retesting previous supports and resistances, you can clearly get the best entries. 
and it's just a lot easier to see. You can see that we made a lower high compared to this one, so it's clearly a bearish move coming up. Um, so you wouldn't be really looking to enter the trade until around this area right here on this EMA strategy, because that's where the crossover happens to the downside. We should have seen price hold this area, but it did not after it tested that resistance. So it broke the bullish structure that we had forming here. You can see that trend line. So after this support breaks, we see the crossover here. We see the break and we see the retest of these EMAs. We want to enter there with a stop above that candle. Actually, I already have it drawn. Let me just show it to you in the next slide. We want to enter there at the stop above that candle for the continuation move lower. First target's gonna be that first support that I mentioned where if you took the Globex trade, you'd wanna take profit there as well again, just to get paid a little bit and then trail the rest down um, as long as price keeps getting keeps rejecting the 20 EMA. You wanna stay in the trade until you see some kind of a bullish reversal pattern like you see here, you see a double bottom. You don't wanna be in this short trade anymore because more than likely you're gonna see a push higher. Yeah, take profit, more than likely gonna end up taking profit somewhere in the middle of that pattern that we see there where the double bottom happened. 